Stephanie Ranzo, um, going on nine years as a trainer here at the Princeton Club, so many of you know me. Um, and even more so, many of you know my six-year-old son, Riley, who thinks he owns this place. And we are going to be doing a walk for autism coming up real soon here in June. I really hope that all of you decide to participate in that. It is something extremely dear to my heart, and I'm going to choke up when I do this <laughs> um, because my son is autistic. But when Riley was 15 months old, he was a neurotypical little boy. He was actually progressing very fast. He was walking at seven months old, climbing at eight months. He had an eight-word vocabulary, didn't see anything coming. And at 16 months old, 36 hours after his DTP series of vaccinations, um, I felt something pulling me. To me, it was the Lord pulling me to wake up at 2.30 in the morning. And uh, here it comes. Here's the waterworks you guys will never see from me again. Um, I woke up to go into my son's bedroom and find him vomiting blood all over his crib. And he then went into a grand mal seizure as I reached for him. Uh, called the EMTs. And on the way to the hospital, they estimate he had over 11 seizures. And that began our battle with what I immediately knew was autism. The little boy that had an eight word vocabulary and was very alert and always smiling. Um, the very next day was gone on that car ride home from the hospital. Um, there was nothing in his eyes. He didn't understand anything. Um, just a blank look and stare. And it broke my heart. But those of you who know me <laughs> know that I am the don't take any garbage trainer here. And I wasn't going to take anything other than my son getting healed. So I set out on a path of hyperbaric chamber treatments and methyl B12 injections and revamping his diet and speech and occupational therapy. Um, we even do therapy in home now, uh, 30 hours a week. Um, some of you have even seen random people downstairs in the kids club, you might not know who they are. They're Riley's therapists. We even come to the gym with him three times a week now to help him with his social interactions. Those of you who knew him at two years old, and have seen him progress now at six years old. He is a different child, and um, I feel so blessed. But it's all about early intervention, and unfortunately, the resources just aren't there for so many people. A very small percentage of government funding for research is given to autism, so it is dependent upon foundations and charities like Autism Speaks to raise money to help all of these kids. And I'm sure that now autism is so close, you no longer just know a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend who has a child with autism. Autism is pretty much in everyone's family tree somewhere. So the only way to stop this is to find that way to donate, to help these foundations that will do research, that will help aid families with education, and hopefully one day help us find a cure for this very, very horrible and heartbreaking disease that has reached out to so many children. Like I said, Riley is doing amazing now. We are two years seizure free um, as of November, one year seizure free, no meds. Um, it's the greatest thing in the world. And I feel so blessed um, for this Princeton Cup family that we have. Like I said, I've been here nine years. Most of you saw me walking around with my, my big pregnant belly. And I don't know what I would do without the support of everyone here. It's been a blessing. I love each and every one of you. And I hope to see all of you out on walk day. So just bless all of you and thank you so much.